All right, so I was asking someone this week how they were doing, and they replied, you know, the, I'm doing okay, but, you know, the enemy's messing with me. Anybody else in that case? Yeah. Come on now. Take all of us, right? The enemy's messing with me. He messes with me sometimes. He, 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 he brings me back to when I was younger and, you know, the situations I used to live with or maybe who I used to be and, you know, and, and but I rebuke them quickly. And I get back to them. We have a little conversation about, you know, who we are and who we're not anymore. And it's important that we remember who we are in Christ. It might sound so like basic and Christianese, but it's literally a big part of the challenges we have is we forget who we are in Jesus. And I'm not talking about forgetting about who we are in our family or who we are in ministry or who we're at our job, you know, but, but who we are in Christ, who he says we are and who we truly are in him. Not because I'm saying so, but because of the scriptures we're going to read. Come on. So after I spoke to this person, I was literally praying. We ended our series last week, uh, strategically positioned, and I was like, "Everyone, yeah, speak to my heart." And I just said, "You know what? We got to get out. We need a little reminder. We need a reminder over these next whatever amount of weeks is on God to share this." But you know, we're starting a new series today. It's titled "Knowing Who We Are in Christ." See, when you want to punch somebody, you forget who you are in Christ. You know, you want to slash back at maybe your spouse. Ah. <laughs> Pray for Carlos, everybody. Pray for Carlos, everybody. You, you're forgetting who you are in Christ. Listen, when you're in line at the store and, and the line's long and everyone's complaining and you're complaining with them, you're forgetting who we are in Christ. When you got a customer, maybe you have a business, you have a customer. And they're trying to chew you down on prices. And you get all indignant about it. You forget who you are in Christ. See, we're to be loving and kind. And Jesus says, uh, if your enemy's uh, thirsty, give him a cup of water. Wait, wait, wait. He says a cool cup of water. He not only wants them to have that water, he wants them to be refreshed by it. Mm, that's good. That's good. And then it says, because that will maybe have, allow them to have heaping coals on their forehead. Basically saying, man, this is my enemy, and you're giving me something to drink. I don't need something to drink, but not some hot water. We want to boil that water. We want to get to that. <laughs> He's saying, no, 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 no. Give me some cool water. Refresh me. Refresh me. I want to. Oh. We have to remember who we are in Christ. And the biggest times we have to remember is when the enemy's telling us we're something we're not. Anybody else? Does he tell you you're something and you're really not that thing? Come on now. You say you're Preach. I shared something last week that the, the best version of ourselves is when we're living like Jesus. If you want your full potential, one of our messages is going to be focused on that. I already made a note on it. And if you want your full potential, it's being more like Jesus. See, he hasn't been walking around in a glowing robe. No, we have to function in life, but we need to function more like Jesus. But we have to remember who we are. And when the devil can disturb our thought process of who we really are, he can disturb us being like Jesus. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the first thing I thought about to remember, to remind us, and I titled today's message, that we're victorious in Christ. And it sounds, you know, so simple, right? Man, we got victory, man. Sorry, guy. Lady. We got victory. Yeah, we got victory and salvation. We do. But what about all the other areas that God truly wants to use us for? And when I was thinking about victory, I mean, to me, the number one story I always think about when it comes to personal victory, and something coming against us is always King David and Goliath. There's lots of victory stories throughout the Bible, okay? The number one victory story is at the cross. But whenever I think about this personal victory of God trying to do something through his people and something coming against it, it's King David's. And we're going to read a little bit about it. We're going to read in 1 Samuel 
uh, 17, and let me paint the picture if you don't know it. Uh, the Israelite army is battling against the Philistines. Uh, the Philistines have this great warrior named Goliath, right? We all know the story. And it says that he was a warrior since his youth. Basically, when he was born and old enough, they started training him to be a warrior. History tells us he was nine feet tall, and that's real. There's archaeological finds of bones in that area. Some people were even 10 feet tall. I mean, today there's people that are almost 8 feet tall. You get that, you know, in some countries in Africa and so on. So like, he was 9 feet tall. This was a massive man. And the Israelites are terrified of him. This is like God's army. King Saul's the first king called to be a, a king over Israel. And, and they're terrified and they're afraid of this giant. And every morning the giant would come out and speak defilements against God, against the army, against the people. I'm going to kill you all, destroy you all. David's brothers are out there with King Saul. Now David's young. He's home still tending the sheep for his dad. And, you know, so he's not part of it. But every once in a while he would go out. His father would send him with some, some supplies, cheese and grain and stuff for the soldiers. So one morning David shows up. And he hears Goliath. And he's like, what? I feel like somebody messing with my wife. I'd be like, what? You just see Pastor be a crumb old school real quick. Yep. I won't be acting like Jesus, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so King David shows up. He's like, what, what did he say? What did that Philistine say? Our God, what? And he goes to King Saul and he goes, man, I'm going to fight this guy. Mm -hmm. Bible tells us David was this little dude. This little guy. And he was handsome. Maybe he was ruddy. He was ruddy. He was like, you know, like, like, kind of like, you know, nice, good looking. So he was like this sweet little shepherd boy. But he had faith. And yep. he knew victory in Christ. And he says, I'll go fight him. So we're going to stand and pray and we're going to read the story. We started something new last week. We're just going to pray first for the word. Then we're going to sit and read it together. So, Lord, we thank you for this message this morning. Yes, Lord. I pray that it encourages our heart. I pray that it empowers us, Lord, so that we can be victorious with you in anything you want to do through our lives, Lord. Yes, Let your scriptures empower us and change us. Let your spirit continue to do its work. As it already started here this morning, Lord, at 1030 when we started our prayer time, the spirit of God was moving. And I pray he continues to move with us as individuals right now yes, together. Thank you. We commit this to you in your name. Amen. You may please be seated. I want you to listen real carefully of David's victorious mindset. This is 1 Samuel 17, verses 32 through 37. Then after that, we'll read the rest of the story. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. This is the first thing he starts saying. He goes, oh, by the way, I'm your servant. He says, your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you're not able to go against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man. He has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping the father's sheep, his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came to carry off a sheep from the flock, I went after it. I struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me and I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. So, sorry, he said, go yeah, and the Lord be with you. Now listen, David wasn't just filled with faith. He was filled with victorious faith. See, that's what Victoria's faith says this. If I die today, I'm not really looking to go, but hey, heaven's waiting, you know what I mean? <laughs> I got Victoria's faith of where I'm going. Yeah. He knew he would be victorious. Why? Because God was with him. He knew the Lord was with him. Then his victorious mindset, it changed the atmosphere, actually. I mean, think about it. Saul's going ahead. Saul finally has to remember. If you read this whole story, read your Bibles. I love you all. Please read your Bibles. You read the whole story, it says they were all hiding behind a cliff. 
and they were afraid of Goliath. Can you imagine being the king of Israel? I mean, you're leading you, the first king of Israel, and you're leading the first army, that's, and, and like, and you're afraid? I mean, you might go out there and take the bullet if you have to, right? But you can't be afraid. And David shows up on our go, and Saul goes, like, I'm not, we don't read anybody else going on go fighting, right? So this is the only person we read about, so we have to just conclude this. No one else wanted to go, but this guy wants to go. So not only is Saul believing a lie, he's discouraging someone else that has the Lord's victorious mindset in him and says, you can't go. Come on. Think about how the devil can get to us. But David changes the mindset. Because verse 37 says, Saul says to David, go and the Lord be with you. See, that victorious mindset that we have sometimes can change other people too. Yeah. And so when else is not believing in God, you start sharing what God did in your life, they just might start believing. Mm -hmm. See, the victorious mindset says, you know, I'm going to share anyway. Yeah. Well, this is uncomfortable. Yeah, but I know. You know, it's more uncomfortable. Let them die and go to hell. You know about it. Mm. And you had an opportunity to share Jesus with them. Yeah. Let's finish the story. 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 50. Listen to the victorious mindset. I mean, just listen to the words from this guy. David said to the Philistine, Oh, oh, let me, let me share something too. This just came to me now. If you keep reading the story, they want to put Saul's armor on David. And Saul was a tall man, his armor didn't fit him. And David was like, I can't with this stuff. i got to fight with my stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's got to sling this stuff. See, don't fight with someone else's stuff. See, don't fight through a spouse. Don't fight with a spouse either. Don't fight through, through somebody's ministry. Don't fight through something that someone else has you think you have it. No, fight with your own stuff. Yes. Yes. See, I'm a short guy. I bite ankles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll give my girl in the face. I want to get him around. Fight with your own stuff. Seriously, we're talking to thick knees when he's done, right? Everybody, you know what that thought that is about? <laughs> Listen. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, when I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down. Come on, bro, he is slapping him. I'll cut off your head. This very day, I will give the carcasses, now he's adding everybody in it, of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. Right. Now he's being inclusive. See, first he says, I'll go, and he said, he'll give it to all of our hands. So listen, as the Philistine, as the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it, struck the Philistine in the forehead, the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone without a sword in his hand. He struck down the Philistine and killed him. About faith and confidence and a victorious mindset. Mm, that's good. He's, he's yelling out, like, Yeah, I, I'm not only going to kill you, I'm cutting your head off. I'm not only cutting your head off, but the entire army that you're with is going to get fed to the animal. Basically, we're all going to die, vultures and common animals will come and pick on their dead bodies. He's like, Talk about like God locked in. Okay? Talk about throwing some shade. Okay? He's like saying, oh, it's not on. And I'll tell you the reason. You defile my God. He was reminding everybody who their God was. Amen. See, when we remember who we are in Christ, other people get to find out. When we forget about who we are in Christ, people don't find out. When the devil tries to disturb us, and get us all discombobulated emotionally, mentally, whatever other way, spiritually, we forget who we are. David had this victorious mindset. He was in full gear. We need to think victoriously. And sometimes we do. But you know what we do? For something personal. 
We're talking something kingdom focused here and spiritual, okay? King Saul and the army forgot about who they were. He forgot he was the first king chosen by God to lead God's people, this nation, okay? Saul believed the lie. He wasn't thinking victoriously. He had a defeated mindset that not only impacted him, it impacted the army, it impacted Israel. They're thinking, wow, the devil's here taking over. Saul's not even fighting. What's going on? And then when some, somebody comes along, let me tell you something right now. Someone trying to discourage you who you are in Christ, you just better keep moving. Because people will try, listen, when you start doing something for God, people will discourage you. Mm -hmm. right. Did you ever try something? People go, you can't do that. You do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I can. You don't know my God. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. I will, I will be transparent with you. Most of you know the story. That's why we're here in this new church. So last year, the devil started lying to me. You guess you closed out there? You guess you're closing up that church after eight years. He'll get to the best of us. And he knows, he knew he could get to me because of you guys. I know some of you are new. Some of you are from the other church and been here for years. He tried getting to me. <laughs> but God wasn't done. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, God was not done. He was not done. And listen, that defeated mindset, it can affect our relationships, our health, our concern for loved ones, our jobs, our businesses. Our finances, decisions we have to make, Free. ministries, Free. it can affect our hearts, it can affect our minds. Listen, it can overtake everything and anything yeah. if we allow it to. Yeah. David wasn't happy. And we must not allow the lies. See, David knew truth. He saw what God did. Saul was, was believing lies, thinking they couldn't defeat this, you know, this, this, this enemy. And, you know, I shared before, and I want to make sure I really drive this home. We're not talking about victory, victorious mindset over worldly things, okay, and personal gains. Because a lot of times, that's the, I got this, we're going to do this. I'm going to get that raise, I'm going for it, and I, I, I'm going to negotiate. I'm going in there with that. I got my little negotiation thing. I'm going to buy this car. I'm like, God, give me victory. God can care less about that. Mm -hmm. Come on. He could care less about that. Am I telling you he doesn't care about your needs? No. Am I telling you that he won't bless you financially as long as you're someone that's advancing the kingdom of God and using it and give you victory? No, I'm not telling you he won't do that. I'm telling you. But I'm talking about if you're looking for victory for personal gains and personal things, all that stuff, don't expect it. It's nowhere in the book. People go, well, King Solomon, stop. Solomon spent in our economic numbers billions of dollars on other things, giving it all away, basically. So God will bless us and will sustain us, obviously. But I'm talking about victories, and he wants to do something through you. He wants to do something in your life, in your heart, so that you can do something for him to glorify him and to show other people. That's what David was doing. He was taking out something that was blocking God's people. You guys get that? You getting that? Amen. Someone's just clap. That's right. Yeah. Well, he, 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 things are going to try to come against him. Come on. How many times has God tried to stop you from doing something godly? Huh? You ever try? Caroline, give somebody something. Maybe someone you know needs some money or something like that. And, and, and you know, you'll go, man, I should help this person. Around. And, then, and then all of a sudden you start thinking about your own stuff. I remember we used to have a food drive. <clears throat> in our first church, and I used to be like, no, bring in some stuff, and I used to be like, if you go in your closet, and you pull out some old can of beans, that's like, where, that the thing expired already, I will hit you with one. <laughs> you better go to the store, you better buy some stuff like you would buy it for yourself. That's right, Amen. that's right, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And we were in another church, we used to help the shelter, we used to buy brand, everybody knows, right, brand new stuff. Yeah. It'd be like, bring the money or buy new Giving, you ain't getting no old stuff from God. Don't be giving no old stuff because of God. That was a bummer. 
I'm talking about, listen, real, personal, truly being directed by God to give us this victory so that we can truly use it for God's kingdom type mindset. And listen, listen, why, why, why did David have this victorious mindset? Why? He was just this little shepherd boy. He was like, quote unquote, like a nobody per se. Right? This is why. Well, a couple things. Then we'll get to the points. Listen. David was empowered by God to have a victorious mindset. And we can too. This is 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by his coming to know him. The one who calls us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. We have all we need to have a victorious mindset, just like David did. Listen, David had oneness with God. Okay, and we can have this also. And that's just, we have an advantage David didn't even have. The Holy Spirit came afterwards, don't forget. John 14, 20. On that day, when that time comes, you will know your, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. This is after the Spirit comes. We're together with them, with oneness. David knew oneness with God. That's why he had a victorious mindset. Listen, David had training. See, being a shepherd boy, you had training against these animals. So he was probably a young man who obviously was practicing with his, with his uh, stone, so on and so forth. I love the part that it says when the, now listen, he ain't taking care of five sheep and one got taken by a bear and a lion. He's taking care of probably a thousand sheep with other people helping him. Right, so you figure out a thousand ones missing, what are you going to do? No, it says he ran after it. I want to know how fast that brother could run. <laughs> he ran after it. You think a bear is slow. Bears are fast. And a lion, he ran after them. It says he grabbed them by the neck. Like, yeah. Get that thing out of your mouth. Sometimes the devil wants to take stuff from us. Yeah. Wants Preach. to take some Come godly on. things from us. Come on. It takes some emotional and personal and all kinds of our finances, our relationships. And we gotta we gotta run after it and take it back with a victorious mindset. <laughs> with some training. First Timothy 4 8 for physical training is of some value, but godliness, spiritual training, is of value in everything and in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and for the one to come. David knew this. You read David's Psalms, his precepts, all the things that he was a man who was trained physically and spiritually. Yeah. David knew the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's why he had a victorious mindset. Again, he wrote so many of the Psalms and so many different things. And actually, there's historical writings that he wrote that we can read of, not in the Bible. This was a powerful man of God. And not a perfect man. You know, he That's messed right. up at the time. Right. Listen, God will use some messed up people. Yep. Amen. Okay, you can mess up. It's okay as long as you get up and you keep going. Yeah. See, a victorious mindset don't stay down when you mess up. It says, Lord, yeah. my bad. I'm going to correct this. I'm going to try to get better at it, but I'm not victory. Yep, yep. Come on. That's right. Yeah. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Scripture is inspired by God and useful to teach whatever is what is true to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong. It teaches us what to do is right. God uses it to repair and equip his people to do every good work. Every good, victorious work for his kingdom. He shows us through his word. And David knew this. And David, listen, David also had newness in God that gave him a victorious mindset. See, he didn't just rely on the same old, same old. It was something new. Oh, the bear, no problem. Oh, the lion, no problem. Oh, this giant, no problem. See, things kept coming his way, but it was no big deal. Because of his victorious, faithful mindset. Romans 6, 4, listen. We have therefore been buried with him through baptism and death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory and power of the Father, we too might walk habitually in newness of life. Abandoning our old ways. See, the devil doesn't show me new stuff. He don't show me new John. He always shows me old John. Come, come on now. He always brings up that old corrupt, evil knucklehead. Come on now. And I just look at him and go, ha 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 
This is me now. Yeah. Come on. Okay. We always bring the stuff up that we did. The stuff we used to do. The way we used to think. That doesn't mean I don't think good correctly now. But they're little blips. They're not my life. Mm -hmm. Think that? Never let a little blip make us slip. Yeah. Um, we're new creations in Christ. Hallelujah. Doesn't mean everything's gone, but we are new in Him. Yeah. How did David maintain all these things? I mean, there's so many scriptures about David. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's mind blowing how, how impactful this man was. I'm telling you, my Old Testament favorite is David. New Testament favorite outside of Jesus is Paul. Because they just, they, 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 they love God, they were sold out for God, and we saw how they messed up, yeah. but they kept going. So David maintained this mindset because of his daily, and I use the word rituals, but let's just say daily focuses, and there's three of them. Here's the first one. David worshiped God daily. How do we know? Acts 13, 22. This is, this is, uh, uh, uh. Dr. Luke writing about David, okay, in the New Testament. After removing Saul, because Saul became an unfaithful king, he left, David was getting positioned. He made David their king. David testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. See, when we do everything that God wants us to do, we find out how much victory we really have. Because when God asks us to do something, guess what? He's already ahead of us getting it prepared yeah. to have to be victorious. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You guys think that? He is. I'll tell you, the most wonderful thing I can tell you about our ministry team, when we were transitioning, because when the landlord came, uh, me and Pastor Lane saw the place, and it, listen, it didn't look like it looked right now. Some of you know that you were in it. Like, Dang, a little dirty, that's what it's about. But, but when the guy told us and the place looked perfect, we brought our board here. They were all like, they didn't look at all the stuff, that, that like the dirt. They saw the potential. Isn't that, yeah. isn't that true? I remember being like, we saw, we saw the potential in it. It was like, everybody was like, yup, we'll do it. Let's do it. We voted, yup, we'll do it. Then we had a, uh, the leaders come. They're like, yeah, I love it. It's, it's, it's awesome. And then we had a, a meeting. It was like 100% yeses. See, when God's going to do something, yeah. he goes ahead of us. Yes, he does. He goes ahead of us to get it all prepared. This is Psalm 63, 2 and 4. I have seen you in the sanctuary, and behold your power and your glory, because your love is better than life. Listen to it. This is the Psalm of David. My lips will glorify you. Yes. I will praise you as long as I live. Yes. In your name I will lift my hands. See, worship God every day in all that we do. And we'll have that victorious mindset. It'll get us through everything. Here's the next thing. David trusted God then. See, this is the hard one. You know why? Because we're very resourceful people. And you know, living, especially in, in, uh, in the country we live in, we have all the resources at, at, our, at our fingertips. Right? But David said, I'm, I'm going to trust God, and then I'll use the other stuff. Okay? Remember Okay, he shared with, with King Saul. He, he knew what God did with the lion and the bear, so he trusted him for the Philistine. I mean, come on, he fought wild animals. What's a man going to do? So David had no problem stepping out, listen, to fight Goliath. He had the faith because of what God did once, and God would do it again and again and again and again. Remember, not for this personal gain, okay, but for a kingdom gain, what God wants to do through us for his glory. This is Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength, my yeah. shield, yeah. my trust in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song, I praise him. He trusted God every day. Proverbs 3, 5. His son wrote this, FYI, passing the baton. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean out on your own understanding. See, King Saul and the rest of that army, they were leaning on their own stuff. They were going, this guy's too big. This guy's too strong. This army can take us out. David wasn't leaning on that. They were thinking he was a target he couldn't take out. David's thinking it's a target I have no problem taking out. Victorious mindset. Yeah, yeah, Victorious mindset. Faithful mindset. See something that everyone else can't see. Yeah. 
And you know God's doing something. Good. Listen. The challenges of life are going to come our way. If we trust God every day, we'll get through them. Am I telling you all your problems are going to go away? Absolutely not. We're all going to have problems and troubles. With God or without God. Yep. We're just better off going through them with Him. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah. I got three decades of experience before Jesus. Yep. Here's the last thing. David gave it all to God daily. Yeah. He wrote one of the most, you know, popular Psalms, right? Psalms 23, 1 through 6. Listen, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need, he says. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through darkness valleys, all kinds of trouble, I will not be afraid. See, a victory mindset's not afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff, they, they protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast before the presence of my enemies, basically showing God who he is, who we are. You honor me by anointing my head with oil, basically you give me the anointing spiritually. My cup overflows with blessings so that we can give it to other people too. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. That's a mic drop. Boop. This guy gave it all to God. He trusted God every single day. Yeah. He had this great faith and victorious mindset. Listen, and again, it helped others with their faith and victorious mindset. Yes. See, David didn't see himself as a victim like Saul in the army. He seen himself as a victor right. That's right. That's through right. Jesus. That's right. He saw victory. I mean, think about what he said. I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to cut your head off. And if you keep reading the story, I know I've shared this many times. He had Goliath. Goliath's head is probably like this big, okay? Like this guy was nine feet tall. So literally his head is like this big. It says David walked through the town holding his head. Basically, oh, you remember this dude? <laughs> he was saying, I've got the victory. I've got the victory. I've got the victory in Jesus. He walked his head through the town. Just to remind him where God was. Sometimes we gotta walk through places. Sometimes we gotta show people who our God is. So that they can understand who we are in him and who he is in us. And that victorious mindset does that. First Corinthians 15, 57. Listen, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Somebody say, give me the victory. Give me the victory. As conquerors through our Lord. Jesus Christ. Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. All right, this is the last of it. Listen, David was empowered by God for victory, and we can be also. David had won this with God for victory, and we have it also. David had training through God for victory, and we do also. Thank you, Lord. David took God and his word for victory, and we can also. David had newness in God for victory, and we can also. Yeah. Remember his daily regimen, worshiping God daily, trusting God daily, and giving it all to God daily. Lord, we thank you for this word today. Yes, Lord. Lord, we are victorious in you because you were victorious on the cross. We continue to trust you, almighty God, in everything we do, Lord. Lord, I speak against Negative mindsets. I speak against thoughts that would try to tear us down. I speak against the devil and his lying, scheming ways against everybody in this room and anybody listening. And we'd be victorious in you in every area, Father God. We would have a mindset, a faith level, Lord, that would change us and elevate us and propel us, Lord, forward, just like David did. Lord, use us. For your glory and for your honor. We praise you and we love you. In your name, amen. amen. amen.